Hello everyone, this is uh, the Codemaster and today I am going to explain Entity Frameworks. Um, entity Frameworks, uh, no actually, uh, the Entity Framework is made for C Sharp, actually for the C family. Um, it, it runs on an SQL server, a standard Microsoft SQL server. And it's very easy to use in your own C Sharp projects. So, what I'm going to do first, we're going to need the server browser here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the window, or to the view actually, and we're going to say server explorer. No, oh. um, let's see, we're going to add a new connection. Um, oh. add a new connection that is going to be a Microsoft SQL server and it's going to say um, data provider for SQL server then it's going to ask for the server name now when you click the, the drop down button it's going to load your servers it's, it could take quite a while and it could say it's not responding and as you can see you have my laptop well I'm not on my laptop at the moment so we're just going to have to select this one select or enter database and this is basically uh, a database you're going to select now if you don't have a database yet and I don't have a da database yet so uh, we're going to add one and again the drop down takes a while um, so it's very good if you know it out of you you know you know how your server is called and where it is located so you don't have to wait for the drop down uh, but the new database will be entity framework framework tutorial I'm gonna hit OK as you can see it just added a database here as you can see it ha you can add a new table to it which we'll do um, this will be our standard user to the table um, this will be our primary key and let's take a look I'm just going to say username and password now this is basically a standard user uh, database so we're going to change user ID to the type of int and down here as you can see we're going to select it and we're gonna open up identity specification and we do this because we need the entity specification um, to make that auto increment feature work so as, if I put this to yes as you see identity increment 1 and identity seed is 1 which means it will start at 1 and it will go up by 1 every record it will be added so as you can see now we have our database, uh, our table structure, and we're going to hit Ctrl S or the save uh, the floppy disk up there, and we're going to sa save this as our user table, users table. So that. Okay, as you can see, dbo.users. Oh, um, no, not right now. Um, here, as you can see, we open tables and it will have users in them. So um, I'm going to add a new one called items. So item ID again with the primary key and then our integer um, item name and item type. And of course to get a link going throughout your um, your user database and your item database or table actually sorry um, we're going to fix it like that okay okay that's good it's not an identity uh, it's important that for this user ID you do not enable this if you enable this, it will try to increase user ID by one. But since you're filling it, you will, you know, make a problem. Okay. Default value for binding. 
that's not necessary. Allow nulls. Um, you can turn that off or on. Uh, the, I'm gonna turn it off anyway, so it may not be empty. It must always be filled in, and then I'm gonna save it. Okay. Now we have our database set up. Now we're gonna go back into our project. Now we're gonna go back into our project here, and we're gonna add it. So go to uh, right-click the project, add new item. Now in the you can find it easier by clicking here on data. And then you will see the ADO.NET Entity Data Model. We're going to add that one. And I'm going to call it Entity Framework. Add it. And then you can choose to select an empty model or generate one from the database. Well, since we have just put a lot of effort into setting the database up, we're going to generate it from our database. Now you, you immediately see the SQL connection that we have at the database and you can select one here. Now, if this is for personal testing um, you can include the sensitive data in the connection string but if you are going to be in a company and you're going to set it up for your company you may not include the sensitive data but for ease of purpose we're just going to include it and this is a very important field. This is the field that you will use in your code to call up the entity framework. So I'm going to call this entity framework tutorial. FW for the framework. Okay. And so once you call this whatever you want, you can click next. So it's going to retrieve the database information. And all you have to do is say, I want only the tables, so the views and the stored procedures are empty. And you can click finish. It's going to add the database right here. And well, what you're going to do, because we added user ID and a user ID, we're going to have to link them together. So we're going to use association. And as you see, a one on menu relation has been added. Now, we're going to have to set that up. So, right click on properties here. This can see multiply one. Uh, wow. Alright, and let's go to view. Uh, let's see, where is it? Architecture Explorer? No, so that's. On my laptop, it was immediately there, so it's very annoying. Uh, code definition window. Up in browser. No. Damn it. Other windows. This one. Yes. So you go to view. Other windows. Entity data model mapping details. So once you open those details. You're, we're going to have to click on this one, Mapping Users to Items. Now, because we have users selected, we're going to have to add items. As you can see, it immediately finds the same column user ID. So it's immediately set correctly. Now, you're going to receive an error here, and I don't uh, if you run the code. Um, there we go. Uh, this is an annoying error. I don't know what it is. It All I know is that it isn't that bad, but that's because you're linking a primary key to a non-primary key. So, are being mapped in both fragments to different conceptual side properties. And again, because you link something to something that it's not exactly the same. As you can see, because this one is an identity, and this one does not have that, so if I would put it to an identity, which I told you guys not to do, the error will still exist. So, and it still has to do with the fact that they are not exactly the same. Look, I can add it as an entity key. 
and then it will give another error. Must specify all key properties, item ID and user ID of end items in relations, ship user items. So that's basically the problem that I have been with. Um, Nullable name, default value, concurrency mode, type. See, you can basically try everything here. That doesn't doesn't really it doesn't really say anything here. The, your project will still run. Everything will still run. You can even remove the 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 linkage. It's just because uh, the database rules uh, basically say that you need to have a relationship between the tables. Now, oh, you can close these as well. So right now, all I'm going to show is the... Well, let me just take a look how long have we been going. 11 minutes 9. Okay, I'm going to go over the rest real quick. It's probably going to be a two-parter. Um, let's take a look. I'm not going to name them properly, even though you have to. Um, just a simple a simple login form. Let's start with that. Um, so this is like this. You get an idea on how the entity framework works. Okay, so username, password. And then the login button. Okay, here we go. So basically, I'm going to show you how to fill the database. You're first going to have to declare it. And as I said, you're going to have to call out your entity framework tutorial FW, which you've set in that uh, wizard. Um, EF equals new entity framework tutorial. There, now that we've set it. We're going to start with, um, we're going to say users, user equals new users. Because we're going to add something to it, we're going to create a um, row of user, of the users table. So basically you can put everything in here what you want. Um, I'm going to say username equals um, codemaster, I don't know. Uh, and user.password will be set to secrets or something like that. No. Oh, wait. Um, something else. Uh, real quick, you can um, go here in the properties of your password field and say use system password character to true to get that password character. Um, and then, once you have created that that uh, users database database uh, the user table row, we're going to add it. Simple. You're just going to have to say your entity framework users dot add object, and we're going to add user to it. And don't forget the ef dot save changes. It's a very important thing. Um, Okay, so you're, we're going to run it once, just once. Remember, you have to run it once. Oh, error retrieving values from object state entry. Hmm, that's odd. Take a look. Problem. Uh, Jesus, really? Really? Okay, well, if this same error occurs to you, you can just delete that um, that mapping. Okay, and we're going to start it. As you can see, it now has worked. And we're going to comment this. Okay, so on the button click, we're going to add a for each loop. And as you, you can just type for each, and then you click, and then you tap, the, you, you press tab. For each user in ef.users. Now, now we've created the for each loop. We're going to have to say if user.username 
equals textbox one dot text and users oh whoops user dot password equals dot text. Okay, so um, now I can say message. I can display message box that will show you it works. Yay! Um, oh wait, let me check one more thing. Um, this is very annoying. Mm. Fixed length. Please, for the love of God, put that to false. Uh, I already did it wrong. Oops. Um, basically what it does, because I'm saying max length is 10, it's going to make it 10 characters long no matter what you put in it. So if I would put in uh, what I did here, um, Codemaster, I said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, Fortunately for me, it fits. But secret one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, it's co it contains six characters. So what it's going to do is co it's going to put secret in there, and it's going to put four spaces at the end of it. So that's why we're going to have to do this again because I'm so smart. Okay, let's run it, and then let's comment the code again. Okay, now we can test it. So the username is Codemaster and the password is secret. Oh, fuck. Um, one second. It's probably that fixed thingy again. Okay, it's gonna go into the for each loop. Users that username, codemaster, password, secret. As you can see, it puts those four characters next to it. And it has another user in there with the same password. Yeah. Okay. As you can see, that is the most annoying thing that can happen. Um, to a simple way of bypassing it, I mean, it's not that big of a problem, but... You can see fixed length should be set to false. Setter, store general path, and type unicode is true. Okay, so for us it's all good. Um, if it if this error keeps appearing, all you have to do is say dot replace. Replace the space with nothing, and we do the same for our password. And now that should um, secrets login. It works. Yay! So and it happens two times because my username has been added twice. So if you don't want that, all I have to say is return. So it goes out of the for each loop once it finds the user and the password is correct with it as well. So. This was a login using the Entity Framework, and the next tutorial will be about, um, you know, um, filtering in the Entity Framework.